What's up, everyone? Sergeant Argeroid here, and today we'll be reacting to World War One: The Series by Epic History TV. So, um, there's a bunch of different parts. There's seven, and 14, 15, 16, 16 again, 17, 18. Oh, so there's six parts we're going to be reacting to, okay. Let's get started. Epic History TV. Or one. Hmm. Oops. Nineteen fourteen. The great powers of Europe are divided into two rival alliances. The triple on By the way, Epic History is a great channel. They make very detailed videos about, you know, history. And they have this amazing like crusades um um, um series and yeah, I'll should check that out. It's pretty cool. Entente. France, Britain, and Russia, united by fear and suspicion of Germany, Europe's new strongest power. And the Triple Alliance, Germany, which fears encirclement by its rivals. Austro-Hungary, clinging on to a fragile empire, and Italy. Oh, it's really, Germany is really annoying. Um, not Germany itself, but Kaiser Wilhelm II. I talk about him all the time, how I hate him and all that. But seriously, um, Bismarck was actually making friends with Russia, and they could have really been friends, Germany and Russia, because if you, because just think about this. Because think about... Um, how, you know, Kaiser Wilhelm II was, um, and, what are you looking at, Eclipse? He's, like, staring at me. And, Nikolai II, I think that's what he is, Nicholas II, whatever, um, uh, they're cousins, which is really interesting. And, um, um, Germany and Britain have, like, throughout history, have been, um, allied. Like, if you think about the Seven Years' War, for example, um, the Napoleonic Wars, etc. But, um, yeah, Kaiser Wilhelm II, though, he didn't like, um, British people because the doctors couldn't save his arm because it was all messed up um so that the fact that he didn't like britain very much and that just caused a whole bunch of problems and you know it started the naval arms race and all of that and britain just decided to go with france and russia instead and another thing Look at this map of Austria-Hungary. What is that? That looks awful. Jeez. Seeking gains at French expense. Wait, who? Oh, Italy. No, they're not. They're not. The spark company. Maybe like Corsica, but or like their lands that they love. But even then, they're. I, yeah. On no. the twenty-eighth of June. This was a defensive pact. They weren't, this wasn't a, you know, territory game pack. It was defensive only, which is the reason why Italy didn't have to be on Germany and Austria-Hungary's side in World War I. In the city of Sarajevo. And, quote-unquote, betrayed them. Archduke Franz Ferdinand, heir to the Austro-Hungarian throne, is assassinated by a 19-year-old Slav nationalist mm. named Gavrilo Princip. How rude. Austro-Hungary accuses its Balkan rival, Serbia, of having... Oh! That map is is not good. Being aided the oh no! And sends an ultimate what is that? Item demanding humiliating concessions. It looks like regular Serbia, but with scoliosis. Serbia rejects the ultimatum, and Austro-Hungary declares war. Serbia actually hours, accepted in nine out of ten of the um the points. Austrian forces are shelling Belgrade. Rude. The Russian Tsar, Nicholas II, 
feels honor-bound to defend Serbia, a fellow Slav nation, and orders the Russian army to mobilize. German Emperor Wilhelm II has promised his support to Austro-Hungary. God, smile. He and his generals see conflict with Russia as inevitable, and the sooner the better, as Russian strength grows year on year. Russian mobilization is used yeah. to justify German mobilization, followed by a declaration of war on... Okay, wait a minute. You missed the fact that Germany actually told Russia to not... To stop mobilizing. Russia. Germany knows war with Russia means war with Russia's ally, France. It has developed the Schlieffen plan oh, to meet this threat of a war on two fronts. First, its armies will advance rapidly through neutral Belgium to encircle and destroy French armies. Belgium doesn't even touch Germany in this um, map. And they invaded through Luxembourg too. Not just Belgium. Near Paris and win a quick victory. Then its forces can move east to deal with Russia, whose huge army will take much longer to mobilize. And so Germany declares war on France. Six million men are now marching to war across Europe. Six million? Wow. Italy, however, remains neutral. The terms of the Triple Alliance don't bind it to join an offensive war. The United States also declares its neutrality. Okay, look where my mouse is. What the hell is that thing right there? What is that? What is that thing? Also, Spain has that area right there of Morocco. President Wilson and the American public have no desire to get entangled in Europe's war. Britain is France's ally, but at first it's not clear if it will join the war against Germany. Hmm. But when German troops invade Belgium, whose neutrality Britain has guaranteed, an ultimatum is sent from London to Berlin, demanding they withdraw. It's ignored, and Britain declares war. A British expeditionary force lands in France, while the German invasion is held up for crucial days by Belgian resistance at the fortress city of Liège. German troops commit several massacres against Belgian civilians. How rude. The atrocities are inflated by Allied propaganda and help turn public opinion in neutral countries against Germany. France. Unaware of Germany. Yeah, speaking of neutral countries, like, they had a ton of, uh, like, by the end of the war, it was literally, like, the entire world against Germany. Like, they had China, they had Japan, um, they, you know, they had all their colonies. I think they had Brazil and, I think they had Brazil and even Mexico. Maybe Mexico, I don't, I'm not sure about Mexico. His great encircling attack launches Plan 17, an offensive into German territory. But in the Battle of the Frontiers, they're driven back with enormous losses on both sides. The British wow. expeditionary force clashes with the German army at Mons, but the British are heavily outnumbered and soon join the French in retreat. The Allies make their stand at the River Marne, 40 miles out. Oh, the miracle of the Marne. They get stopped. Inside Paris, their desperate counterattack saves the city and drives the Germans back. Eclipse. Both sides suffer a quarter of a million casualties. Mm. The race to the sea begins as both sides try to outflank each other to the north. A series of clashes leads to the first battle of where they I have a weird name. I think that's how they pronounced it, right? The Allies desperately cling on and prevent a German breakthrough. There are more heavy losses on both sides. The two armies then dig in along the entire 350 mile front, wow. seeking shelter from deadly machine gun fire and artillery shells. Trench warfare has begun.
British warships win the first naval battle of the war at Heligoland Bight, sinking three German cruisers. Wow. Britain has the most powerful navy in the world, 29 modern battleships. Yeah, and Germany is second. To Germany's 19. Wow. They, they now impose a naval lot. blockade on Germany, preventing contraband goods, including food, from reaching it by sea. The aim is to bring Germany's economy to its knees and force it to surrender. But a yeah, that British blockade is probably the reason why Germany lost. If that wasn't there, Germany would have won, seriously. A week later, the British cruiser HMS Pathfinder becomes the first victim in history of a lethal new weapon. Submarine. The submarine launched torpedo. The U-boat. German submarines, or U-boats, have a surface range of 9,000 miles and can attack wow. undetected from beneath the waves. It's a large range. They herald a deadly new challenge to Britain's command of... Hey, let's have a look at this map. Oh yeah, it's not that seas. bad. On the Eastern Front, Russian armies invade East Prussia, but they blunder into disaster at the Battle of Tannenberg. Oh yeah, I think like an entire Russian army was just mangled. Where General von Hindenburg and his Chief of Staff, Erich Ludendorff, mastermind a brilliant German victory, taking 90,000 prisoners and destroying an entire Russian army. The yeah. Russians contribute to their own defeat by transmitting uncoded wireless messages. <laughs> A second massive German. The thing about the Russians is that I heard that one of the things that they do is that they would play like on the radios, like all of their messages, and hope that just no one intercepted them. That's pretty much what they did. A victory at Masurian Lakes forces the Russians into retreat. In just six weeks, the Russian army suffers nearly a third of a million casualties. Wow! Meanwhile, that's a lot. Austria and yeah, I think I think it should have included that Germany had to um, send some of its troops to the Eastern Front, which is pretty much what saved Paris. Hungary's invasion of Serbia suffers a humiliating reverse yeah. at the battle. This this doesn't really show it correctly, but Austria Hungary it sent most of its military to Serbia. And it didn't leave that much to defend against Russia, which is why if you look at a map, you see that Russia takes a huge swath of um Galicia or Galicia, whatever. But yeah, they take they push all the way to the Carpathian Mountains. It is Crazy. Austria-Hungary. Yeah, it's ridiculous. Even though the Aust Austro-Hungarians have most of their army at Serbia, they still end up like stuck until Bulgaria enters the war, and then they crush Serbia from both sides. But yeah, I don't think it's. Uh, I don't know if it's going to mention it or not, but Austria-Hungary actually did some um, really bad atrocities in Serbia. Its offensive against Russia also ends in disaster and retreat, with the loss of more than 300,000 men. The fortress town of Chemischol is cut off and besieged. Wow. That By is the a Russians. very interesting city. The Germans are forced to come to the rescue, launching a diversionary attack towards Warsaw. It leads to weeks of brutal winter fighting around the Polish city of Łódź. But there is That's how you pronounce it? I thought it was the lots. No clear winner. Meanwhile, the Turkish Ottoman Empire has joined the Central Powers. Declaring Ooh, that map is not good. What the heck is that over there? And also Serbia was part of the Entente. I don't know why it's not showing that. War on its old enemy. Rush I mean, did I say Serbia? I meant Montenegro. Sorry. Russia. Turkish warships bombard the Russian ports of Odessa and Sevastopol. 
while in the Caucasus, Russian troops cross the Turkish frontier. Beyond Europe, the war rages on the world's oceans and in far-flung European colonies. German troops cross... Yeah, Germany's colonies just got swiped up almost immediately. ...cross into British East Africa, modern Kenya, and occupy Tavata. Did you just say Kenya? Are you kidding me? Hold on, let me replay. Did they really just say... Did they really just say... Okay, I'm just gonna make sure. Maybe I misheard it. ...cross into British East Africa, modern Kenya. No, it's Ma Ah, shoot. I forgot what it's called. I'm sorry. Tanzania or Tanzania? I'm sorry. I don't know how to pronounce it. Does that like a really cool mountain? Um, but anyways, that's off topic. I don't know why I said that. <laughs> um, I really hope they're going to talk about the guerrilla warfare in Germany, East Africa. It's very interesting. And occupy Tavata. Our allied forces seized here. Wait, what? German troops cross into British East Africa, modern Kenya. Oh! Okay. Oh. So they're not calling the German colony Kenya. They're calling the British colony Kenya. Okay, I understand now. And occupy Tavata. Wow. So the Germans are actually able to go on the offensive in the colonies. That is Our interesting. Our allied forces seized the German colony of Togoland. Modern Togo. The British forces invading German Cameroon are defeated at Garoa and Nsangakong. Really? While a 3,000 strong force attacking German Southwest Africa, modern Namibia, is captured at San Fontaine. Oh, what about the, month, what about the panhandle? Where's that? Later, British landings at Tanga end in chaos and defeat. Tanga? At the hands of a much smaller German oh. force, led by Colonel von Lettoff Vorbeck. Cut off from Germany, Lettoff Vorbeck goes on to wage a highly successful guerrilla war against the Allies, yes. tying down huge numbers of troops. In Asia, Japan honors its treaty with Britain and declares war on Germany. Japanese forces go on to seize the German naval base at Tsingtao. Also, Sing Tao, they actually made a really... Whenever Germany was there, they made a really... They're, they're, they're just being Germans. They made this really famous beer that's popular in, like, China. I, I don't know, like, all the details, but I just think it's really interesting. And it kind of fits with, you know, Germany's stereotype. The German colonies of Samoa and New Guinea surrender to troops from New Zealand and Australia. It doesn't show it here, but Australia owns southern New Guinea. But in the Pacific, off the coast of Chile, German Admiral von Spee's powerful East Asia squadron sinks two British cruisers at the Battle of Coronel. Ooh. Both ships Good are job. lost with all hands. Five weeks later, he runs into a British naval task force at the Falkland Islands. Four of the How did you get all the way over there? Wow. The five German cruisers are sunk. Von Spee goes down with his oh, flagship. No. That's, that's Meanwhile, sad. in the Middle East, British troops seize control of the Ottoman port of Basra, securing access to the vital Persian oil that fueled the British fleet. Wow. Oh, yeah, I have a question. If, I don't know if y'all know, but... It, it shows, like, on a map that Persia... That Britain owned like southern Persia or Iran or Iran or Iran, whatever the heck you want to call it, and Russia owned the northern part of Iran. So what the heck? Well, like, were they invaded? Or were they just like, okay, give me, let me occupy this land and we'll give it back to you? Or how how did that work? Or like, was it like Belgium? Was it the same thing the Germans did with Belgium? Like, I'm sort of confused about that. That winter, Austrian troops finally capture Belgrade. 
Finally, Up there is literally there. right on the border of Austria Hungary. Like, it's not even that good. Counter attack and drive them back once more. Wow. The fighting in Serbia has already cost around 200,000 casualties on each side. Oh, on each side. Okay. In the North Sea, still, that's German a lot. Warships mount a hit and run raid against English coastal towns, shelling Whitby and Scarborough, and killing more than a hundred civilians. Oh, what the? What was the point of it? That though, like, what were they trying? What? What were they trying to accomplish by doing that? On the Western Front, the French. Oh, this is December. It's their over. first major offensive against the German lines. But the first battle of Champagne leads to small gains at a cost of 90,000 casualties. Oh. While in the Caucasus, an Ottoman offensive through the mountains in midwinter ends in disaster at Sarikamish. Well, it worked at first, and then after a while, they just got screwed. And it didn't mention the Ottoman push into the Suez Canal. Maybe that's 1915. But anyways, regardless. Turkish. Why didn't they show, um... Why didn't they show Russia invading Austria-Hungary? Casualties total 60,000. Wow. Many. Oh yeah, this is, like... Some say this is like the thing that kickstarted the uh, the Armenian genocide, which is interesting. Frozen to death. Because they like blame the Armenians. On the Western Front, that first Christmas is marked in some sectors by a short truce and games of football in no man's land. The killing zone between the trenches. Yay. That kind of thing, it's sort of interesting. Like, it just sort of... I it, it's, it almost, like, gives me faith in humanity. It's such a nice thing. You know, how they just stopped playing. I mean, they stopped fighting, and they just, you know, played football. And it's really... I think that's really cool. Because, you know, a lot of people say that war and, like, bad stuff or evil is in our nature. But maybe the, maybe the complete opposite is also in our nature, so it's kind of like both. Um, I mean, but it doesn't make sense from, a bio like, a biological standpoint. Anyways, I liked that. That was a great episode. And the maps were awful, and that's my only critique. And it didn't co um, cover some things, which is unfortunate. Like, it's not even that long. It's only 12 minutes. They could have fit some stuff in there. The stuff that they did cover, though, I I, I liked it. I think I think it was great. But, any, but if y'all enjoy that video, make sure to hit the like button. Subscribe. Only, like, 11% of you are subscribed. Come on. Like, I... If all of you subscribed, I would literally have, like, I don't know, a lot of people subscribed. Yeah, a lot. Um, anyways, anyways, I, I, I like it. That was fun. Um, and tomorrow we get to react to 1915. I need to sneeze. I need to hurry up. I can, I can